All right, here we're going to take a look at example two. Wow, we're almost done with this section already. Um, in example two, let's see what we got. I want to use cylindrical coordinates to set up, but don't bother evaluating, an iterated integral which yields the volume of the solid. Ooh, okay, volume of the solid. That should give us a tip as to what we're going to integrate. But I want this solid to lie within a cylinder. Remember here that this is a cylinder because Z is unbounded there. And it's got to be also uh, inside the sphere. Okay, so this is a really awkward picture to try to go ahead and draw. I'm going to do my best here because I like to keep practicing my 3D drawing. So let's say that this is like my picture of a sphere. The weird part is I could kind of imagine like a, a cylinder that maybe begins to kind of cut through it. Right? This is really, really awkward. Right? So I kind of am going to have some space that's like on the inside of the sphere, but also on the inside of the cylinder. And that is really awkward to try to look at. Um, I have a better picture here that might kind of help in terms of uh, demonstrating what this can kind of look like. And it's in my notes, but I'll just pull it up here really quickly. It's something like this. You can kind of see that I've like cut off the walls of the sphere, so to speak. And uh, so you can kind of see the cylinder on the inside. But what we're looking for is kind of everything that's like underneath this top part and kind of inside this entire kind of capsule-like shape. That's the volume that we want, that capsule. It's kind of got those spheres capping off the top and the bottom, or that, those portions of the sphere. So that's kind of an interesting shape that we're working with there. But again, there's not really an issue if I try to tackle this with the triple integral, because I can just start to think of floors and ceilings. So that's where I'm going to start. I'm going to think about what's the highest thing, uh, the highest uh, Z coordinate I can reach here, and what's the lowest, and how would I determine that? Okay, so um, I'll start by saying this. We have that the region E is a bunch of X comma Y comma Z points, and I can think about what needs to happen. I need X squared plus Y squared. If that's going to equal one, then that's going to give me points that are on the cylinder. But I want points that are on and in the cylinder. So I'm going to grab points where this could be less than or equal to 1. So growing back towards the origin or maybe they're out. And in a very similar way, I can say that I need x squared plus y squared plus z squared to not just equal 4, but to be anything 4 or less. And I need those both at the same time. Okay, so... You know, once I have this, if I wanted to find bounds on Z, this maybe isn't too bad. Because there's only one inequality here that contains Z, and that's very, very helpful. So I can say, if X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared has got to be less than or equal to 4, then Z squared has got to be less than or equal to 4 minus X squared minus Y squared. But that, of course, implies that z is going to be wedged between a negative radical and a positive radical of this amount. So immediately, I have bounds on z. Now, if I know that I want to use cylindrical coordinates right from the start, I might think there's no way these can be the right bounds to write on my final integral because these have x's and y's. I'd like to convert this stuff to z's, or sorry, sorry, to, to r's and thetas, excuse me. And that's actually not too terrible to do because you might see how can I get rid of this negative x squared minus y squared. Think about it for a second. One thing that I could do is I could rewrite that as minus r squared. So now I'm getting ready to go with these cylindrical coordinates. Okay, now I can go ahead. Uh, oop, I'm almost out of space here. Uh, I'll have to say we project E into the xy plane. We already took care of the z um, components. So now I want to think about what is this going to look like if I project down into the XY plane. Again, if I go back to that previous picture that I had, if I 
move down to the xy plane you can maybe see like the x or the y axis spitting out here and the x axis is coming out this way and this way but like if i think about the footprint the shadow that gets cast i can probably see well it's kind of just like the circle of this cylinder that's all i'm really working with so i can see that we project this into the xy plane and we get well i'm going to get exactly this circle it's that same circle with radius 1. I get D is a bunch of xy points where x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 1. Or we could write that in polar, which is R goes from 0 to 1, theta goes from 0 to 2 pi, And thus, if I want to find the volume of this solid, and I have all the bounds already sketched, this should be pretty easy to set up. See if you can go ahead and actually try to write down exactly how you would set up the volume calculation here. Pause the video, and then when you unpause, you'll be able to see if you got the right answer. Okay, so here's what I got. I'm going to have my outermost bounds be my 0 to 2 pi for my theta, and my 0 to 1 for my r, then my negative radical and my positive radical. This is rough here with limited space. And then what I have to integrate is 1. But I'm still going to have my r dz dr d theta. A lot of times people forget the r. Remember, if you want the volume of the 3D solid, the triple integral can find that. You just have to integrate a 1. The r comes in there from the conversion to, uh, or from the xy coordinates to these uh, polar coordinates. Okay. Again, you weren't asked to evaluate this, so this is as far as we need to go. In the next video, we'll take a look at the final example number three.